As you fellers and fellettes know, guys always wanted a ramp truck. So a while back, I bought the world's worst one and not including the exterior and interior. Well, it needs a incredible amount of work, like a dually axle, driveline, transmission, engine. I mean, the list is long. So I did the right thing and bought a bigger, older ramp truck that's also been off the road. <laughs> Great. I'm gonna fire this thing back up, stuff my entire family in here, put my race truck on the back, and then see if we could drive this thing 800 miles to Florida. Sounds fine. No, pending, pending breakdowns, multiple. So this beautiful rig here is a 1980 Chevrolet Silverado 30 flavor, you know. It's a 3 plus 3 equals 6 camper special. It's got the 454 block of bags in it, turbo hydromatic 400, the dually rear wheels with the 411 gears. It is a stout rig. This one's going to be a little bit different, however, because I know this one does kind of run. In fact, I backed it into this exact spot. A handful of months ago but I don't know how well it runs I've never put it on the highway I've never towed anything with it I've never hauled anything with it I know nothing about the previous owners its history or what's been done to the truck so what we're gonna have to do tonight because you know this is last minute that's just how I do things we leave early in the morning there needs to be a pickup on the back of this and we got 800 miles to Florida I got keys hanging in the column already I think we just twist on it, see if she's gonna bark off. Get this into the shop, we're losing daylight, and we just gotta tear into this thing and go bumper to bumper, full maintenance, see what's broke, what needs to be replaced, what we got a MacGyver, get the truck on this thing, throw the bags in, and I guess we just head on the highway. Get your motor run and ow. Go for a hole, broke my ankle. Guy's gonna check out the battery situation first and then ought to check on the Earls as well. Bentley's gonna help me on this here operation. You really like this truck, don't you? He's really fired up to hear this thing go down the road. There she is, the block of bigs. We got a die hard. Well, we got dual die hards in here. I'll be dipped. It's probably got a winch later on it then maybe. Not even sure. We'll have to figure that out here in a bit too. Batteries is hot. Oil is low. Whoa, needs changed. Quite a bit of gas in there actually. We can doll that up. I'll bring you in here and show you what we got going on. There's some fairly new looking stuff in here actually. Huh. I'll be able to give you a full tour, fellas. Once we get her in the shop, we're losing daylight here, but Got some fairly new batteries. Looks like a power stirring reservoirs, charging whirler. Is that an AC line? That looks like it's been replaced on. No way that that works, but we got not only a lid flip, literally, but also, you know, the elements open to the world's situation. All right. I mean, it ran before, let's see if it fires up. We'll get it in the shop, see what we got going on. All right. Should have the ignition sticks. Yep, right here. What in the devil? Oh yeah, it's got electro digital pump. I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, you should. Sounds like a, what are the machines that put down the ice in the hockey rinks? Zamboni, wide open. One, two, three pumps, <laughs> nothing, still nothing. One, two, three, four, there she goes. Oh, the belts, charging, oil pressure, stone cold, not the Steve Austins, the big block. Fuel gauge might even work, I'm doubtful, very. 
It says it's got 29,000 miles. We know that's probably a million. It has a sweet factory pack in here, but it's broken. And that's not the original light. Someone must have done something there. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Just hang tight. We'll get it in the shop so you guys can see it better. It's got tilt. All right, we'll run her across the field here, back down to the house, get her in the shop. Drives. Oh yeah, there we go. I think I got tail lights. Wow. Got the old square body door just shaking away. Moses, sandals, this thing is long. It's gotta be 40 feet, at least. I'm almost to the wall. Oh yeah, she's got gyps and tips. That fuel pump is really loud. All right, now we could take a better, you know, look at her. Let's hook our peepers on it. It might be too shiny for me. I gotta be honest. It's getting me a little bit scared. Now we can get a better look at this old feller here. Like I say, it's an 80. You can tell because of the way that it is. The square headlights here. Got some paint fadage and even some rustage up here on the roof. But the broken vent shades, you know, kind of make up for that. It's got the best mirrors. Sailor rattle. 30s. Of course, camper special. Three plus threes. Running boards. I mean, this is one cowboy Cadillac right here. This side has some rust down on the rockers. Pretty typical. Cap corner's pretty decent, though, and the fenders are decent. It's probably been a southern truck all its life, I'd imagine. Bumper ain't even really run into nothing, if I gotta be honest with you. This was really kind of a 90s, you know, grill kind of situations. Each side is missing one lug. I don't know what that's about. What are these tires? Firestone, it says. They look, I don't know, fairly decent. I just don't know how old they are, you know. Ramp trucks don't get driven a lot, so. No rust again there. Lots of debris from me weed whacking. Rocker is down. Cab corner, about the same. Got some sort of spoiler edge up here. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, flick that wind up, you know. I don't agree with this here. I, what's, why is this happening? Why do we, I think I gotta probably Hack that off. Bleep bloop it in the comments, but I think that's a little, a little much. But this part right here is the real gem of the whole rig. Of course, we got the dual wheels. This 100% confirmed hauled the race car. I'll show you why here in a minute. Nice long pull out ramps. Sure. Also some welded hooks. A couple different flavors. One here, one here, there, and here. Old school. If you want to do it that way. And I believe this is storage. We'll find out. Storage, storage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got more welded hooks up there, too. I think this is all storage. There is a hinge on here. Don't know where the cord is though. Maybe we can find that, probably not. Closer look at this mess. That's too bad. It's the way she goes sometimes though. But this steel bed is in really good shape. A lot better than that orange one. Still got fire, I wonder if it has, no, six matching tires. That would be pretty weird, for me anyway. Look at this. 
That's a Silverado trim, you know. Sure. Nothing in there. That's a mine roll of shockolators. New in the box still. Does this tilt even? Oh, it does. Got all the seat belts. There's the missing lug nuts. That is really odd. We got boom booms back here. I don't know. Warren G and Dr. Dre. Seat is a little, a little worn, but maybe not too bad, you know. Front one is definitely down. See, right there. Got the deluxe pouch, just sagging like a diaper. Got the old six by nine flavor boom booms down there. Overall, not too bad, huh, bud? Mm -hmm. Headliner looks pretty good. We got CB radio edge. We got, there's dual tank buttons. Tape deck, no, wait. Oh, I thought that was a pole handle tape deck. Is it a removable face? It is, see? Some of you watch right now just had your mind bottled. But back in the day, you just take your radio with you right in high school, see? And then they don't steal on it, allegedly. I got one of the biggest tape collections in the world, so we'll be set on tunes. Horn works. Let's do a light check. All the dash lights work as you saw. Oh, we got cab lightage. One down. Running light, head lip. We got one head lip down, running light down. That one's up right there, see? We got tail lights there. Tail lights, tail lights. We're in good shape. Oh yeah, DOT'd up. Nope, definitely not. Check this out though, over here. You could tell it was used to haul race cars because of the way, you know, that it is. 2018, I would say it was the last time this was used based on that. So she's been sitting a little bit. He's coming across the field. This blew it open on Bentley. It spilt all over the place. Dimmer switch. I don't know what that is. Ooh, rotalizer. Brand new. We could use that. Probably. Can we? Yeah, we could pay him to use that for something. Some more electrodes. It's already got the cup holders in it. She's pretty set up. I don't think this was ever smoked in. If I'm being completely honest with you. <laughs> Not bad at all. So I got this from my buddy. And he's the one that threw the batteries in it. And he got it from the guy that had it just parked up for a handful of years. And uh, I got a smoking deal on this thing. It sat for a long time. He had a pretty decent price on it. But, you know, I just kept saying no until the price got right. I just couldn't help myself. And it's been, you know, if it's a racer's truck, I think they keep up on them halfway decent anyway. But there you can see the new belt, charging whirler. It's got some wires. I think we got a holly under here. No, that was wrong. I think we got an Edelbrock. Yep. We got an Edelbrock with a digital choke. This is odd, they had a mechanical pump in here. But they just dead-ended it, and you can hear that digital one just whining forever out there. Hydro boost assist, assist brakes, them are fancy to have. Some sort of relay, clicky-clacky, that's been replaced. That's been junkyard replaced, the wiper motor. So it's been, you know, tinkered on i would say at minimum under the rig right now well as far as the guy's belly will let me go anyway carrier bearing here looks pretty good that dew joint looks good and then vice versa this carrier bearing right my teeth 
you know, it's uh, halfway decent. And these new joints look pretty good too. I'm trying to chase down the fuel pump make it happen right now. Uh, ben, I go ahead and hit that key again. It's over there somewhere. All right. Just want to locate that so I know where it's at, see what's going on. Look at the pipe on this. Looks like a water main to run a city of 20,000. It just keeps going. Exhaust is fairly new. Look at all the frame support strengthening its head. This whole like ladder bar thing. So I don't know if it was sagging and they tried to fix it or this was, you know, preventative, but that's nice that it's done. Anyway, looks pretty good under here. In the back hinder, anyway. Well, a guy found her. Look at this. Yeah. Listen how loud this bad boy is. Go ahead. All right. But I don't really like the setup. I think it was kind of put in in a hurry. You could probably keep it. That Edelbrock is only going to take like five to seven pounds of fuel pressure anyway. So if I just carry a cheapy little spare, at least now I know where the setup is. It's right underneath the drinker side front door, or I guess footwell. Here's where that bracing starts. You can see it goes down. Anyways, back to here. So on my list to do's, see where that little nubby thingy is? I think I'm going to put a filter in there, kind of pre-filter this pump. Or maybe I can even put it in here. Uh, get the longevities out of that. We don't want this sucking in a bunch of debris and miscellaneous stuff. And then I did already see a fill tray up by the fuel make it happener, so we'll probably just replace that one. But look at the body mount in this. The floors. Not too shabby. Kind of thinking... I want to put it in there, but I might have to shorten this. Um, maybe here. Right there. Make it easy to service. We'll figure it out. Is it locked? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, those must have been the old ones. 12 and 14. Whoa. Quite a bit of. Oh, there's the winch trigger, I think. Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's. We got to try that out. Spare belt over there. Some PVC pipe for some reason. I wonder if I can open this from the. No. There's the fuel fill. So I imagine both sides are identical. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I got you. Uh, that's only the ignition. And the ignition uh, that one's the door, the circular ones, the GMs. So we don't have the keys for these. That's unfortunate. But I bet a locksmith can help us out. They got these generic numbers. And I do need to try this out quick. This side is definitely locked, unfortunately. Got her? Yes. Yeah. No way. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. I can't believe the winch works. It's actually a lot of storage. Oh, there's a ton of storage in there. See if you can open the other ones now. Is it? Yeah. Use your boop. Boop. We'll kick it. Now try it. See? Try these other ones. Use all your back. Oh. There you go. There's a spare tire in there. Ah, uh, go get the air hole, and we'll soak down the hinges. Okay. This is sweet. 
Hold the can up right, son. Well, I guess that'll, that's one way to do her. <laughs> okay. Stop suspendy. Well, you got 15 more doors to do. Storage achievement unlocked. There is a lot of it. We got the Centennials Champa containers, but it's flat. But it's been balanced, so we have hope. Bentley's over there rousting up an air hose right now. Let's see if we can get the wind back in that one. Be nice to have a spare for the trip. Boy, that is stuck. Oh, that little devil. <laughs> sure, it's more of the same, you know. Place your bets. It's doing wind noises. But why don't you scoot back a little bit? I just don't trust it. Thanks. Um, can you find a tire pressure gauge for a dad? Yeah, thanks, buddy. Beads leaking. Somewhere from here to there, most likely here or there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just bust this off the bead with the tire machine, clean this up, see if I can get her to hold, because she wasn't leaking any wind anywhere else, and this thing looks brand and new. It's only like 37 years old. While I'm doing that, do you want to get the big shop vac and start vacuuming out all the storage stuff? Well, a guy tried cleaning it up by hand quick, but this wheel is in really tough shape. This is the top lip. And a guy is a presuma sumsulatin. And she was sitting like this in the truck, you know. And then all the water came down through that bed and just sat, you know, in the lip of that wheel and just rotted over the years. I'm going to put it on here and see if I can just rotate it hit it with a grinder, clean it up enough to maybe get a bite, you know, a seat. Probably waste some time, but we could start on the engine soon, huh? Yep. Should be almost gold. Did you get it all vacuumed out? Yep. Nice. Got her cleaned up with the cheek poker, but man, it just it ain't clean. You should never attempt to file or grind your wheels or modify them in any way. It's dangerous. <laughs> Bringing them around, bang you. Well, Bentley and I finally got it. No leaks, a little bit hairy. They want these at 65, but I'm not going to do that. It's checking up pretty good, as you can see there. Ended up flipping the tire over, getting the softer side that wasn't so rusted onto the bad side. You know what I'm saying. But can it hold air long enough to get a guy you know, to an exit. That's what we're hoping anyway. Little guys having fun clamming around on the truck here. I need to figure out a nickname for this guy. It just hasn't come to me yet. What we're really doing right now is just spending some time letting that big block cool down. I'm gonna jump right in, change the sparkulators, check over the lightning hose to see how they're doing, change the oil, oil filter, all of the basic maintenance stuff, probably even put a timing light on it and a vacuum gauge. My goal is to, you know, can a guy minimize the breakdowns? I didn't say stop them. I can almost guarantee something's going to happen, but let's minimize it since I'm going to have my wife and my three boys with me on this trip. In fact, right now, Jessica's in the house. 
packing like crazy. The goal is right away in the morning, drive the truck on the back, throw the luggage in, and just scoot. Got the big old jack up in this one, I guess. Probably eventually get some more straps and stuff in there. And then that's the spare. And then I'll probably use this for most of my straps will go here, I guess. We're still working on this door. She's a little taunt. I just sprayed it again on Did this you? side, yeah. So it'll come around. It's gonna take a little bit. Oh, you gotta do some more vacuuming in here. I tried to get it back there, could have sucked it up. Grab that little broom, maybe we'll sweep it up. Mm -hmm. a little water displacement on the 40th try. We took those lugs behind the back seat of the back of the cab seat seat area. Ran them on, they don't look right, but you know what? It's safer. Okay, now I think I'm going to stick Little Man in here and have him start pulling out all these spark lighters. And then a guy can, I don't know, these lightning hoses don't look that bad. I got to be honest, but maybe we, maybe we replace them. I don't know. Guy just drilled this one open. And I somehow just use my Leatherman and, you know, <laughs> nice and secure. Anyway, we got goodies in here. JB80. Coolant. Transmission fluids. Power steerings. Funnels. I can't even see all the way back there. I'll let little man get at it. More belts. A couple hoses. And now... We have access to dual tanks. I don't even know if I dare flip this, but we're gonna. Normally they just get stuck, and then you have none tanks, but we're gonna let it rip since we're gonna be getting 10 miles to the gallon. All right. Here we go. I don't know. It says it's full, but I don't know if I believe that. That's more realistic. The good thing is, it was on the left tank, and we were only gonna go as far as that tank unless we did just this. I guess I hadn't realized that. He's already digging through here. Hmm. Dot fives, huh? Only well, original fuel pump in there. I think we'll put that back. Little man's gonna vacuum all this out. Man, look how good a shape this is. None of this is rotted out. I just expected this to be fully rusted. And then we can load it full of parts and goodies. Actually, I'll probably load the other side full of parts and whatnot. Kind of keep this just for fluids you know if i'm putting fuel in can we check the oils and other stuff i'm gonna go ahead and replace the spark plugs and spark plug wires yeah i'm gonna do them one at a time so i don't forget how they go back together before bentley gets too far i wanted to show you this way past due for a spark of later change, this is gonna make a big difference. Look how old school these are, old ACs. Sparkulators are in, lightning hoses are in. Bentley did that side and I started in on this side and realized how difficult it was gonna be, so I just finished it out. Glad we did that. These were, oh, they look fine, you know. They just got a couple miles. I don't even know how they were firing, let's be honest. You wanna fire it up, Bentley? Should already sound better. Oh yeah, idling much smoother, much smoother.
Well, we're gonna go grab the jack out of the race trailer, get the front end up, go ahead and get this oil change. And I noticed, well, it's hard to see right now, I'll show you in a bit. The shocks are absolutely shot, the bushings are gone. And that is why these have been sitting on the floor since 2001, I guess. Hoping they're the right size. We'll see. Yeah, this part is gone. So it's just clanking. We were going through the field and it sounded like the front end was falling out of the thing. But I'm pretty confident that was the bulk of the noise. Captain's side wheel bearing feels really good. Here's what I was talking about on that shock. It's, you know, bushing's completely gone. Also, how to tell a race car driver owned the truck. Wix filter hanging out. Inspection covers off. Don't know why. Looks pretty clean in there, though. Had a fuel line replaced over there. I can see with the light. TH400's doing TH400 things. Leaking. You know. So, we're going to bust that out right there. See what the Earl looks like. Throw another Wix back in. You should be able to get her with your fingers here in a second. This is pretty slick. The old reg's got an oil cooler already on her, so she's going to have a little bit more capacity too, but... Everything's looking really good so far. No metal on the Mega Mint. Nothing looked weird coming out of the filter. Now we're just kind of wiping things down here. Uh, trying to prevent any drips or anything like that. And of course the guy's got to put some heavy duty diesel oil on this. I don't know how many quartus this is. It's going to take with that cooler. I guess we're going to find out. Did you have fun this evening? Yeah. What was your flavor at? Um, probably all of it. Nice. That's a good answer. Oil change. Done. It's almost 60 pounds of oil pressure. I of course that will come down a little bit when she gets some heat into her. We're going to make a to-do list. We're going to have to hit this really, really early tomorrow morning. It's past little man's bedtime, so I'm going to go put him down and Promise not to work on the truck without them. That means we're really going to have to get after it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so we got to fix the uh, temp wire. Yeah, the temp wire. That's just hanging. Guy's got to have a temp gauge. The shocks. Got to do that. Uh, mirror. The mirror. Review mirror. We got to get all the stickers off the windshield so we can see out of the thing. Lights. That would be nice. Oh, yeah. Headlight. Got to check the trans fluid and fill that, as well as the brake and the rear diff. I already checked the U joints and the rag joints, or the in the middle extender upper carrier bearing joint things. Them look pretty good. I uh, already checked the radiator. That's got juice in it as well. Got to check the other side. Think your side wheel bearing. And then I think we just load some parts and go, huh? Yep. Awesome. Good job today, buddy. We'll see you guys probably about 6.15, 6.30 in the morning. We got a lot to do. All right. Wash your face, wash your hands, brush your teeth, comb your hair. Time for bed. Good morning. 17, 9 or green o'clock in the mornings. Added fuel filters and wiper blades on the rig. I'm just assuming that the wiper blades work because this one's out of a junkyard. Could be handy going to Florida. Looking through this list here, we really don't need any of this. And necessitize other than the fuel filters probably check the rear diff and the shift machine juice so I'm going to kind of go through those in a specific order after I get the shock elators on we'll just kind of move through the stuff that's important and whenever Jessica comes out with suitcases well it's time to go I am going to test drive this today however probably scoot into the town get some fuel dump some water down the head of this thing and 
see what happens. It's actually really dirty. It's probably hard to tell, but there's even more shine under that. Moses sandals. I don't know if I can handle it. GM front shocks are so easy to replace. That one came out nice and easy. So did the nut tops there. Oh, well, easy light, easy. Oh yeah. Oh, and they were shot. Anyway, so, all right. Mine rose, well, for Pete's sake, mine rose going in. There we go, she's in. I'll go knock the other side out really quick. On this side, the shock mount bolt, there's a nut on the back of that through the frame. That was loose, so this shock was just shaking, banging up in there. And By the way, this shock was also bad. While I got this up in my teeth, I'm going to get the grease gun out and grease all this. So I know. I said it. Let's grease it. So I think the guys decided to put that fill tray right in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this back, probably here, and then slice up a new rubber end. And I'm going to put actual hose clamps on it instead of these things here that should really not exist, but they do. Bentley's gonna hit the key and we'll check for leaks here. Got the miles road on that thing. Go ahead. There we go. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Huh. No leaks, okay. Oh, I might carry an extra fuel pump with me. That thing's not sounding very rowdy. All right, fuel filters done. I guess we could pop that open. A little nervous. See what kind of juice we got. Not bad at all. I'm going to put just a shot in that little guy there. Put her back on and just. I'm gonna fire it up this morning so we can check the shift machine. this work? Oh, that works at least. Oh, yeah. How do you seek? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be low, it looks like. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. We need... Probably about three quarts, actually. Which means I gotta completely rebuild this now. Perfect. If I rebuild, I mean this here stuff at the bottom. Brand new clutches. I like to throw her in a jug of other juice, then you can shake on it, and it doesn't take 58 years to get down the filler pipe. Sounds a lot better with the new sparkulators in there. I know. Well, kind of surprising. It was kind of kept up on, but maybe not maintenance. Hard to say. I definitely think it's 229,000 miles though. Whoops, completely missed. <laughs> Drink up, little buddy. I'll be dipped. Well, little man's cracking some open. We'll go ahead and replace them now. Love these old school visors. Kind of a late 80s, early 90s thing, but 
I was wiping the glass down here. Check this out. It's just mud up here. All along there. We'll get to the pressure wash. I'll try to ease that off a little bit. Well, it's time to fix the look backer little thingy. Bentley's over there getting that mounting button off the bracket for me. I'm going to go outside and trace that mark with the permanent marker so I know right where it's at, or I just make a dot basically. And then I got to get to work here. You got to use the razor blade, scrape everything up, use some sandpapers, I don't know, glue things. There's steps, I guess you could say. I'm going to take all these stickers off too. There was one right here. How to tell you're a single race car driver. <laughs> That's how. Bentley's going to start peeling those off for me. They come off pretty quick. I'll clean the whole glass on the inside and then get this mirror up. Not too bad, huh? Uh-uh. I think Mama will appreciate that, huh, little dude? Yeah. Let's check this bad boy out here. Low. Oh, yeah, she's low. See? We can get... A little bit more in there. Half a finger down. About an inch down. Bentley ran in the house and made his dad some toast. Thoughtful little man. Well, the list is pretty well gone through. I need a headlight. I don't have it. I gotta buy it. And the air cleaner I got is the wrong size. Oh, there's the shop lion. Hey, bud. What are you doing? Go get some mice. So, according to this, we have test drive. Let's go put some fuel in this thing, shake it down. I've got seven miles on it. That's how far I've driven this from my friend's place to here. And then we'll see if we got to do anything else or hit the road. So far, the truck's running great. Nice, solid two, three shift. Oil pressure's looking great, still charging great. I was worried about the temperature. It's cold out today. Well, cold. It's like 55. Coming off of sea, that was my biggest worry. I took a really windy road here with a bunch of hills. Check this out, though. Find bottle. Is that cold or what? That's an R12 system, fellers still ripping the AC. Unbelievable. First fill up ever. It's going to be interesting to see how many gallons we get out of this thing. It's going to hurt. I know that much for sure. Well, we got 14 gallons in, which means it's a 20 gallon tank on each side. 20 gallons on a trip is going to be miserable. I flipped it over to this tank. The fuel gauge went past the F. I was thinking it wasn't going to work. So far, it's running. So, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If the dual tank selector works on this square body, that means this is one of a million square bodies where the tank select switch actually works. <laughs> Bentley's on the inside watching for leaks. Oh, must have one there. <laughs> yeah, corner of the door, pretty difficult. Well, the guy I was in town picked up a new air fill tray. This one's about two and a half times more expensive than the cheapy, but there's a great episode of Engine Masters where they proved when air doesn't have to bend to get into your fuel, make it happener, you make significantly more horsepower and torque. I'm not worried about that. This, you know, makes all of that down here. But if I can get 300 more feet a mile per gallon, this thing will pay for itself immediately. And I ain't kidding you. I do need a half inch spacer. This one's more so for a holly. These Edel Brokens, they got a weird fuel outlet. But that does it for under here. Return the old wipers while well, they were new. Not quite correct. Got different ones, so those are good to go. Check these bad boys out. 
Yep, putting floor mats in her. Moses, sandals, is that mahogany? No, it's actually just foam. But I mean, it's gonna look good. Old bulbage out, new bulbage in. And uh, you know, fix the running lights and blinker with advanced troubleshooting. No, I just, I wiggled some wires and they turned on, so. I just gotta put this backer, hinder, inner kinder. Be good to go. Well, we'll see if the Kinch has enough horse torch left to pull a truck up here. You'll know where I'm going immediately when you see this thing. Done a lot of work to her. Chad Donnie's helped me too. I got it running so I can use the power steering. So far the winch ain't even struggling. It's slow, but she's just geared down, I think. Nice long cord on this thing. Yeah, we're headed to Brayden, Florida. Ooh. For the danger range. Boy, if this thing comes off of here, it's going to end up three counties down. That's probably good. Shut her down. E-brake assist. Yeah, still works. Throw it in gear. Oh, forgot to put the window up. Power windows, you know. Gotta have them in a race truck. There'll be some more coming up on the truck here. It's back, it's better than ever, but we're still significantly underpowered versus the other trucks that placed first through fourth. They got a different engine, apparently. I don't know how these things operate. But anywho and way, we're going down to have some fun. Gonna find some straps, get this thing strapped down. Jessica's got the luggage here just hinting at me that she's ready. So we're about ready to hit the road in this thing. 800 miles, idiot. Well, here she is all loaded up. Actually works out pretty slick. All the tools and extra parts are in the bed or the wedge or the ramp. It's not the front of the truck is what I'm saying. All the luggage went in the bed of the Ranger it's in danger. And then we just pile the family into the cab. So I'm gonna go round them up. And we're gonna hit the road. We're gonna to try to split it up into two days. We got 800 miles to hopefully make in this truck. Well, we're cruising right along about 60 right now. Stopped and got some treats, some water and whatnot. We're gonna try to go about uh, what, five hours today. And we'll try to hit the rest tomorrow. So far so good, truck's staying cool. Great oil pressure, it's charging. We're doing about 60. It's gonna be a long drive, but I don't wanna push this old girl. Funny enough, the difference between an empty bed and a bed with a truck on it, you can't tell the difference. It's the same. That's a big block for you. Jessica's cruising it. How's it going? Yeah, it's pretty good. I wish we could go a little faster, but. Yeah. We're getting past my traffic. We're not used to that, but it is what it is. We actually just ran the other tank empty, flipped it on the fly, and away we go. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Cruising right along, no issues up.
first fuel stop. Of course, that tank's empty. Like I said, we flipped over. This one had about half a tank, but don't fully trust the gauges yet. So we're gonna fill it up again, see how many gallons go in, and then I can figure out if that gauge is accurate. The truck's doing great. The uh, temperature gauge, barely even moving. It's doing a really good job. This was leaking a little bit when we switched drivers. Had to clean this up, clean the air cleaner. I think it was just over full, to be honest. Gonna let it sit for a minute, check on the Earls again to see if we're chewing on that. Keep on trucking. The Ranger back here, it's crazy how little they move on wedge trucks versus like a trailer. They're always, you know, doing less. But on here, it's just following right along. Oof. Nice looking little pickup. All my straps are still here. Let's check. Well, we could maybe get a crank out of that. Nope. I guess not. Gauge is accurate. Sweet. Now I gotta swing around and fill up the other one. Back on the road. Mother of Moses. That's a beautiful ship. It's actually a little bit too good for me, if I'm being honest. Just swung into the motel six and a half here. It's about 10.45 at night. We're gonna call it for tonight. We made it right around halfway-ish, give or take. We did develop a belt issue. I've got belts squealing like you wouldn't believe under the hood. Gonna have to address that in the morning. Don't want to be blowing them puppies off and get too hot or lose the charging whirler there, but we're going to pack everything in. Boys are pulling all the luggage out of the Ranger there, and we'll see you guys bright and early in the morning, do a little tinkering, check some fluids, and we got another, I don't know, 408 miles or something like that to go. Great. Morning. How's it going? What? How's it going? Great. Truck's still there. That's neat. Well, first things third. Let's check on the Earls here. Look at that. Plum full. This old big block ran probably 2,600 to 3,000 RPM. For 400 miles yesterday didn't use any oil that's pretty incredible so I've been looking at these belts here you can definitely see it slipping I always look for this see down here on the frame probably can't there's this powder and the powder is burnt rubber from the belts well all these belts are really tight in fact I can't go any tighter it just wouldn't make any sense but I think what's happening and you can see it there is this cap has been leaking on a guy. This isn't over full, it's actually low right now. And this juice has been dropping right down onto the water pump pulley, specifically the power steering hydro boost pump later, and causing this guy to slip here. So I need to clean up these pulleys. I'm gonna stop and get some brake clean. I actually didn't bring any. And clean up these pulleys and that might do the trick. 
cold start this morning. There's that darn belt. I think we can get her fixed though. Maybe. Got to clean just a little bit now. Not a lot, just, just a spritz. Spritz it on there. Yeah, there we go. By the way, for you Chevrolet guys, or I guess non Chevrolet guys, you always wonder what all those holes are for in this charging warmer bracket up here. Well, GM's really good at making one part that's just interchangeable for everything. Here's a great example. Two of those holes are for the reservoir bracketry. If and you got the ACs and the hydro boosters. Huh. Now you know. Okay, a little bit more clean. Just getting all of that out of off of the pulleys. Got this topped off already. I'm gonna wrap some rags around this. Zip tie the rags on so if this starts weeping again not going to do, well, that, basically. There we go. That should work. Can't even get to the throttle. No more squeaky squeaky. Boy, that thing really sucks the air and whistles. Should be all buttoned up. Well, that AC is actually pretty cold, isn't it? Not bad. Boys, how is it back there? Pretty good? Comfortable? Nice. Bailey, you got enough room over there? His seat belt's one of those you gotta go <laughs> really slow, down and up and over. You got it. There it is. <laughs> it's a GM thing. Anyway, 400 miles. Here we go. fuel pumps conking out or what but they're getting a lot of bogging going down the interstate definitely a fuel issue that one was almost empty this one down here was just shaking it started to come out of it I'm gonna turn the truck off and see if I can figure out what's going on here this by the way resolved that issue okay turn the key off Turn it back on. Yeah. Dead pump. Oh boy. This is gonna get interesting. Alright, turn it off. Well guys, I really quickly found the issue here just by following the wire. It's a bad relay, but I'll be able to cobbleize it. I don't even have maybe I do got some digital tools. We'll see, but here's what's going on. So I followed the power wire to the pump elator, which is, you know, zip tied. Comes into this scotch lock thing here. Well, that's wrong. Which then goes into the digital choke, which then goes up across here, into this guy, into this post, which then swings into this relay. This relay then goes into the harness, which goes into the truck which is going to be a keyed 12 volt. So a couple of issues here. One, we shouldn't have a relay in line to the pump. We should have a fusible link. The other one is I got 16 different connections throughout here. The other one is I'm sharing the digitals with the electrotronical stroke. I'm going to address that later. For now, I'm going to do the right thing and just basically go around this relay and jump these two. See? 
Let's pump on. See the fuel squirting out over here? But I'm gonna need a switch or something then. Hmm, let me ponder for a second. Jessica's up in the driver's seat. She's gonna run the ignition for me. I'm gonna dig around in the fuse panels here and find a 12 volt switch. I know there's one because this used to run lights off the bumper. And there's a couple open ports that GM always uses. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can wire this pump up safely. I said it, but this is why. Oh. Right here. You guys cooking yet? Yeah. You watching a movie in there for Pete's sake? Yeah. Oh, for crying in the mud. All right. Okay, guy found 12 volt switched. There was one that was running the CB radio. Shh, come back now. But I ain't got a CB antenna anymore. So we would just blow that out anyway if we tried to use it. So we're gonna use that 12 volt source for the fuel pump. So that actually gets full 12 volts. I'm gonna snip that black wire out of there. We'll leave this Mickey Mouse stuff. I mean, we'll leave this professional stuff because it's perfect for a digital choke on the fuel make it happener. I'll fix that relay and then that'll run the choke. And then I happen to have, I don't know where I put it, oh, over here. I got one roll of black wire, which is unusual. Typically I wire everything in red, sad and positive. But I'm gonna run a whole new wire from the pump all the way up, right inside, direct connection, no links and relays and all this other stuff. So that fuel pump gets full 12 volts and that'll fix your issue, right? Did you say ain't got? Ain't got. Okay. New wires run down here. Guy went and put a uh, crimp and solder connector and then also ran some, you know, sleeving, weather sl salt sleeve heat shrink tube over top of that. And then can a guy never replace that fitting again? That would be fine. Okay, we got 12 volt there. We got the black wire, you know, because that's positive. Cut out all the white ones, cleaned it up just a titch, left the choke as planned, and then I got that fitting down there. So I think we're good. Here, you wanna go turn the key and we'll make sure we get fuel pump and pressures. By the way, the fuel is looking nice and clean. I hear it, there we go. Now we're in business. All right, that's good. Back on the road. We made it like 15 miles no fuel again this time not digital the pumps not doing pump things I don't know if it got burned up or what happened but I'm gonna pull the bottom of the fuel pump off see if that screen is plugged up remember we only ran a free filter since I've owned it but before then who knows what it sucked into that pump so I'm gonna pull the bottom off see if I can clean it up not we'll be replacing that pump with something else pre-fuel pump filter is not plugged i can suck through that easily the filter screen in the pump a little bit dirty but you can see where the inlet actually is that's not going to prevent it from pumping so we've got two things that could be happening one is pump is bad two is the pickup screen and or the tank selector is plucked. So that's great. I'm gonna to try to eliminate the tanks. Then we can move on to fuel pump. Didn't have a hose long enough to suck on the tank, so I barred one from the steel line to the carb and blew backwards through it, and I immediately got fuel this way. And don't worry, I'm gonna, that'll be, we'll, re we'll recycle that. Uh, you know clean up stuff so we have a bad holly red fuel pump that's great luckily a guy brought the edel broken clicky clacky they're really not made to do this but 
that's what we got right now until I can get a mechanical pump. Took out the uh, Wix because this one has its own pre-filter and wired it in just like the other one, grounded right to the frame. So now I just gotta go back up and uh, put this chunk back in that I borrowed to test the tanks. The good news is the tanks are fine. We should be on the road. Go ahead. Hear the pump. There we go, fuel. Gonna build pressure. Hear it filling the bowl. There we go. Any leaks? Doesn't look like it. All right, on the road again. Boy, she's idling a little low with the AC on. Let's see here. There we go. Well, made her to the closest parts store. We're now deviated from the path here, funny enough. Right there where that silver rattle is sitting. Remember the mid-engine AMC? That's where I was fighting the fuel filter. Same exact spot. Here we are again. Anywho, upon closer inspections, that is a Edelbroken broken mechanical fuel pump. <laughs> I'll be damned. So I'm gonna take that out, put this in. Uh, I also got some sleeving because I was starting to vapor lock as well. Try to doll everything up, probably keep the clicky clacky in line. Cannot help just get it to here to do this to back up into there. That's the plan, anyway. New mechanical pump is in. Now I've just got to figure out return in or supply and then out up into here. I'm going to try to do it with the hard line first, but the outfitting goes this way directly into the block. It's not a really ideal situation. Let's see what I can come up with. Well, physically I'm done. Looks a little weird, but we're going for the functions. I made a sharp 90 out of steel brake line. Came way up over here, out of the way, see? I still wanna have this filter in, not only to keep the fuel making happen or cleaning the breasts, but we wanna be able to troubleshoot that guy. I'm probably going to run a zip tie right around there. And then I brought her way up out of the way over here. Keep it off the manifold area in the heat. And then that's that DEI sleeve stuff. You've seen me use it 100 times. Up to 500 degrees really helps cut down on vapor locking. This should do the trick. Jessica, you want to turn the key? So what should happen, that digital pump should put fuel through here. It should put fuel, yep, there it comes. So that'll actually pump through the mechanical, but what I'm hoping is the digital hands off the fuel to the mechanical, and that's gonna get it the rest of the way home. We shouldn't have any issues. Go ahead, fire it up. There we go. leaks down there no leaks here I can feel the mechanical pulsing you can see it pulsing so I just got to strap this up clean up my mess we'll be ready to rock I got a little bit extra fuel line a steel line some hose clampies miscellaneous stuff we'll throw out the truck and have with just in case
had no idea ball peanuts were such a big issue down in the south. But everywhere I go, there's peanut festivals and factories and stands and whatnot. I don't know where I'm at, Central Florida or something like that. Filling up. Got to do a strap check, checking. Check, check. Yeah, those seem fine. Everything's going good. Now that we got actual fuel pressure to this engine, it's running very, very good. Guy can crack into the four barrels when he needs to. Doesn't even kick down on the highway. Of course, that's because of the 52.7 gears or whatever's in the rear. You know, they're they're there. I'll tell you that. Overdrive would be really nice for a 5-speed manual. Maybe sometime down the road. I don't know. We'll see. You guys can bleep bloop it down there in the comment box. Of course, a lot of you are going to say 12 valve, but just keep in mind I've got two and a half horses and almost 400 foot pounds already. Uh, maybe Duramax with the 480 or something? I don't know. Would be pretty cool though to get some more highway speed out of this thing, but everything's going good. All the lights are still doing the light things. We got about hour 45 minutes left into our 800 mile journey. Bright and early the following morning, we made it to Florida. We're at our motel, 800 miles in this old ramp truck, unknown condition, didn't know anything about the history. Jumped in or did a little maintenance and hit the road. And it did pretty darn good other than that fuel issue there, but we've got all that sorted out and it's running better than ever. This is where I need your help. What do we do with this thing? Keep it around, flip it, engine swap it, leave it alone, doll it up, I don't know gonna have to do some it is a really nice rig i gotta be honest thanks guys for watching appreciate it very much we'll see you very soon